Okay, here we go. We're going to get ready for the next talk, which was um, a bit of a miscommunication. Um, there was talk about um, a DHS talk, and we forgot to say that was the uh, the DEF CON Hackers Society, not the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> um, so, so the intention was the, uh, and it was, I'll take responsibility. It was my bad, but the announcement was uh, sucked. Um, <laughs> for the session. It was originally intended, uh, the secretary of DHS, um, who I've worked with in the past, who is a good guy, he's not evil, um, he wanted to come and uh, talk about uh, conversation and I was fireside chat and I had all my questions ready to grill him and poke fun and just have a, a good conversation about where things are going um, and where DHS is or isn't the appropriate place to help. And, uh, and everything was great on Monday, <laughs> at the beginning of the week, and by the end of the week, nothing's happening. <laughs> right? I mean, that's how quickly things change. We spent weeks planning for it. There are multiple people that spent weeks planning for the secretary to be here, from security coordination to the agenda of every time he steps his foot and moves, right? Everything has to be kind of coordinated in the Secret Service. And if you get a secretary attending, you also get other people. So we had all the senior leadership from cyber, and Jen Easterly and um, Eric Goldstein, and it was really going to be a pretty impressive um, engagement at the beginning of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get stuck at the border? I, so Ooh, spicy. <laughs> <laughs> we started, baby. So instead, um, we're going to do our version of the DHS, right? This is our... Are you beginning. going to ask us all the exact same questions? I'm going to, oh, I should pretend to be, be the amazing. secretary. <laughs> yeah. I, I could pretend to be the, but then I have to be between two servers, between I, two goons. I am the secretary of DHS. That's right. Well, okay, well, so we're going to, uh, we're going to, instead of um, trying to rearrange our schedule and move something forward or backwards, we're going to fill the time with our it's illustrious panel here. And since we didn't have a DEF CON 101 um, and we don't do DEF CON 101, this will be our DEF CON 102. And uh, so now's your chance to leave. <laughs> if, if that's not what you were expecting. Look at that guy. He's like, boom, yeah. out of here. That guy, that guy now, knows what he wants and it's at, not us. As a, uh, as a concession prize, the secretary still wants to do the, the fireside chat. So we will do that. He's committed to doing that and we'll end okay, up sir. having it at some point in the future, whether it's in person or at the next year. It'll happen. It just didn't happen this year. So sorry. Alrighty, hey, I want to hey. pass it over to this wild bunch of red-shirted rascals. Yeah, and I'll, I'll kick this off with, a, with an old goon story for you. Man, everybody wants to see the feds. Woo! Uh, oh man, this is really loud, I'm ringing. Okay, so DEF CON 6, um, my very first time at DEF CON, I'm gooning. And DT walks into the, the knock where we're all operating, he's like, hey, we have to fill an hour because the speaker just dropped out. Go fill an hour. So now we're just doing, nothing changes. Nothing changes after 20 something thousand years. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's my start. So how do we do this one on one? I've never attended. Uh, do you guys want to hear about when, uh, you know, who knows about the fountains getting soaped or suds or whatever at, at the Alexis Park? What that's about like the a, concrete yeah, in the toilets? Thing. No, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell him. See, I got Rifter's hit. Rifter's gotten so spicy in his older I age. I am. I don't it's care. Great. This is when you get this old. You know, my old people. You just stop caring. Um, all right. So, um, so it was a tradition at the Alexis Park, or it became a tradition to soap the fountains, to like create a, a ridiculous amount of suds and just have a good time. Um, after several years of this, the staff obviously caught on. On Thursday, we're arriving for the show because it didn't start until Friday at that time. Uh, and all of the staff is around the fountain, right? And we walk past them and we're like, oh, yeah, you guys uh, getting ready? And they're like, yeah, we're just going to shut everything off before everybody gets here. And we're like, yeah, that's pretty smart. That's a good idea. And then immediately ran down the street to the mini mart that was on the corner there, which, by the way, said that we drank more than any other group. No, th the that was the AP itself. Rest of the year, yeah. Um, bought all of the Dawn liquid detergent, ran back, filled up the ice bucket plastic bags. You just gave them a little twist, right? 
and then Wait, it's the twist. hurled them. I like how you're like, the twist, that's the key. Get, the twist is key, because on impact, you know, it just comes, it comes apart nicely. Uh, but you don't want to knot it up. You want maximum dispersal of the, uh, of the gel there, yeah. the soap. Uh, and then, so they had disappeared. The hotel staff disappeared. We're hucking bags of, of Dawn liquid detergent into the fountains. And it was, it was our best year. Um, <laughs> it was massive. And there are pictures out there. If I would have known that we were doing this, I would have got the pictures. But there was foam everywhere. And then probably 15 to 20 minutes later, the staff is once again standing next to the fountain, except this time there are you know, suds licking their heels. Um, and we walk by again and we're like, oh, they got it, huh? They gotcha? And they were like, they're just like staring at us we're like, <laughs> like. Now you know those are rookie numbers. You need to pump that up. I'm waiting to see it hit the Bellagio. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to, to add to that, that a couple years back, um, when we came into this property, one of the, um, the, the sock boons mentioned that, you know, you guys, you should, that, that fountain down there, it's going to get bubbled. And I'm like, no, it won't. It won't. It won't. The attendees don't do that anymore. And it's true. The attendees don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the other thing we used to do for funsies is um, we didn't do this, but uh, so for years we were at the AP and they would be like, you need a giant liability thing, da 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 da. Um, and we're like, why? And they're like, well, we have to replace the bathroom every year. <laughs> and we're like, why? And they're like, well, somebody pours concrete in it. And we're like, really? <laughs> so we actually literally bought three Vegas bathrooms over the years. Um, also, here's an even spicier story for you that probably no one... Of course we're not allowed to have bean bags. Well, we also poured the concrete in the toilet. Uh, so that was a person's sake. What Nikita is over here saying is this is why they're not allowed to have bean bags. Like, remember when we had bean bags a couple oh, of years no. ago? So that people were trying to steal the bean bags. And so they were like, how do I get rid of all of the, the foam inside the bean bags? Well, someone tried to flush it. Styrofoam. <laughs> they tried to flush it in the back. And now I Guess where it overflowed? The head of the Caesar's fountain. office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to tell a horrific DEF CON story, but it's actually a uh, two. I'm going to do two first. So one, um, at the Alexis Park a couple years ago, uh, you know, we were young. We were much less responsible than we are now. And someone drank a huge amount of alcohol and fell down the stairs and cracked their skull. So uh, a young woman. I actually, you know, I don't know how the story actually ends, but I do know how it starts. Well, it's, it's a great, no, it's a great story. So she cracks her skull open and we're like, oh my God. So we have EMTs on site. We ammo her out of there. They do a CAT scan and they find a tumor. And that's how, she caught, that's how they early caught her cancer. So DEF CON does save lives. It also fights crime. Um, there was a hotel we were at for a number of years and we, we had been attending this hotel for a number of years, and the accountants, they said to us, we don't want you back. Every year we come, you come here, we lose $10,000. We're in the black, or we're in the whatever, the red. red. I don't do accounting, so I don't care. Um, <laughs> and we're like, that seems impossible. We drink more alcohol in a weekend than you sell in a year. Plus, we fill every hotel room, and we eat all your food. And they're like, yeah, but we lose money. And we were like, that seems odd. And there was a slight management change there. And, uh, and the next year, the, they, they were like, we, we don't know what happened. You guys made us a fuck ton of money this year, like more than we ever made. And we're like, and, and someone from our staff judiciously pointed out, they go, your CFO has been embezzling all the money. <laughs> and they're like, didn't no, that's they, not possible. Didn't they legit investigate that? Wait for it. Okay. <laughs> and, and then they were said, and the statute of limitations on that case is not, is that you could prosecute them. And they're like, there's no way that so-and-so embezzled all our money. And to which he responded, like, have you noticed he drives a Maserati? <laughs> and then he pushed that girl down the stairs? No. <laughs> but yeah, no, legit. Like, uh, so for five years, uh, a CFO at one of the hotels that we used to go to 
was embezzling massive amounts of money. He's, I, he's, I, he's I have actually one. in prison, right? I mean, I, yeah, 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 they got caught. Yeah. It was like, it was, yeah, well, nah, it's that, yeah, yeah. I have one. Hey, I need audience participation what, on this. Yeah, one. I was going to say, what, it, what do you want to know about I, DEF CON? Like, okay, so how many years? Grifter. Yeah. I got this. <laughs> do you? Do you? <laughs> All right, audience, who's heard of Shot the Noob? Wow, one guy. The one guy. Has, any, has anyone heard of like shots on stage with new speakers? All right, there's a little bit more. So like that's, that's what we do, right? Um, would anyone like to stand up and sort of describe how that works, what goes on? No, they're so shy. No? Okay, no. So. I can, do, I can demonstrate that. Sorry, we, so what you normally hear, and you'll, you may see it on, in tracks this weekend, um, so we have a little tradition here at DEF CON. Uh, new speakers get to do a shot on stage. It's totally voluntary. We ask them up front if they want to do it. Um, and uh, it's not a full shot. It's less than a full shot. It is. Um, but, uh, but it's a long-standing tradition, or so we would love you to believe. So DEF CON 19, we had Whit Diffie speaking at DEF CON. <laughs> and uh, it was going to be Whit Diffie and Moxie Marlin Spike on a panel with DT. And uh, we had to go pick up Whit Diffie at the airport. So three goons got in a car, pick up Whit Diffie at the airport, came back. Because he's a legend? Because he's a legend, but he'd never, at DEF CON 19, he had never spoken at DEF CON before. So in the car, I told him, well, we have a little bit of a tradition. You're not allowed to speak until you do a shot on stage. And, and Whit is all about that, by right. the way. Like, Whit literally is like, sounds great. Didn't, didn't think anything of it, right? We get back to the green room. Whit Diffie meets DT. He mix, meets Marcy Marlin Spike. Uh, we get him on the stage. And then DT goes into a long introduction about how we have the old crypto and new crypto meeting each other for the first time. And, um, and then he asks Moxie Marlin Spike a question. And Moxie answers the question. Then he in, asks another question and directs it to Whit Diffie. So we're solidly, and you can watch this on YouTube, we're solidly eight, ten minutes into the talk, and Wit hasn't said a word yet. So he gets to the first question, and Wit says, "Well, I, I'm told I'm not allowed to speak unless I have a shot." <laughs> At which point, X bolts through the room because we have forgotten the shot, and uh, gets the scotch, brings it up. You can see it on video. Puts it on the stage. Wit does the shot, and uh, we go on. The rest is history. Right. So that then expands over the period of years to become a sort of a long-standing tradition where we allow new speakers to do a shot on stage. Um, it got a little out of hand uh, with us interrupting talks for a while, so we, we slowed that down and now we do it beforehand. Really? You can interrupt my talk anytime. With, okay. Uh, with we booze. may do that. Yeah. Would you That's like gonna to happen. interrupt your talk? Okay. So um, yeah. I would like to know if anyone in the audience has DEF CON questions. I would like to have a Q&A here. We have a contest goon, we have speaker goons, we have a sock goon, we have longtime senior staff, old goons. So if you would like to know something about DEF CON or ask us a question, no matter what it is, AMA. let's have an AMA. Let's do this. Like, what do you want to know? Does anybody have any questions? Spicy. Oh, that's, that's, that's hard. Like that's that. any question. <laughs> Anything. If you have a question, stand up and speak really loudly. We can. So okay. They want to be a goon. She's so is the, is the she's question shooting her shot. How to be a goon? How to be a goon? How to be a goon? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, the way that people have become goons uh, that I have experienced is they basically have been drafted. Uh, either they've been around goons and something needed to happen and we just grabbed another body and that human just suddenly became a goon. Uh, there, is, uh, there are teams that are looking for additional people. Uh, usually, uh, so for at least speaker operations, uh, we do what's called uh, probies. So it's uh, one year. Uh, where you come and volunteer for like an hour or two, you're still a normal human, but you get to learn the ropes, you get to see if our team is right for you, uh, get to learn what's up. Uh, we, we are happy to take probies. Uh, being a probie does not guarantee you a spot on our team. We do that based on seniority and who's attending. Um, I'm sure that other teams have some something, but I think it's, it's very uh, unique to the team. So if there, 
what I, what I can probably say the hey, best is... Don't forget, there's also a seven-hour coding test, and um, <laughs> you have to do backflips, and... Oh, wait, no, we're not Google. We're real it, people. So, so there, there is, like, a variety of teams that are all very unique. Um, so if there is a particular, like, like, area that you particularly like to hang out in, contests, vendors, uh, if you want to do uh, A&E, uh, the arts and entertainment people, uh, there's info booth, there's uh, security or SOC goons. Um, yeah, by all means. Like, I, I would say also, um, and this is true for like career stuff as well, uh, it's kind of one of those things where it's like if you want a job, you just start doing it. I think, does everybody, huh. anybody done that before like at work where you're like, you know what, I'm like, I'm trying to get that promotion or I'm trying to get into that department, I'm just gonna start doing that. Like go approach whatever group it is that you're interested in joining and just be like, hey, how can I help? That's how, that's how it worked for me. Like initially um, I was in the vendor area as a vendor and I just started helping the vendor goons out and they were like, hey, you should totally come goon with us. So if, just start doing it and then be like, I don't know where my red badge went. <laughs> Has anybody seen my t-shirt? Um, and then maybe they'll just put one on you. So. I, I would add to that to say that um, one thing that I found is really uh, helps people is to say, I can do this. Instead of saying, how can I help you? People have a very hard time directing others, especially new people that come into the mix. It's like, mm, I have a hard time telling you what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what you can do. And so they tend to take it upon themselves on their shoulders more and just go with the flow. But if you say, hey, uh, I noticed this going, I can help you with this, or I can help carry that, or um, would you like me to stand here and while you do whatever? Um, offering what you can do in the conversation, especially if it's something you enjoy doing, and that is very key, that will help you get in to becoming a goon much faster than saying, what do you want me to do? And, and I've seen that happen in so many cases. You just have to put yourself out there and, and do it. Or Nikita could just, like, you could deputize the whole crowd or something. <laughs> yeah. so I've done that. Do it. Like, wave things. your arm over them. them. <laughs> and Nikita will get you guys your shirts. My question is, what is it you're interested in? We've been up here talking. You tell oh, us no, what you're interested let's, in. Let's take that offline. Let's go <laughs> to the next question. We're, we're going to beat this dead horse. Go. Another question. Actually, um, if you're not busy Monday morning, we have a lot of pallets we need to move. So if you can run a pallet jack, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Teamsters. Oh, so somebody just I mean, welcome to Moving Pallet stuff. So I, I don't remember who did it, but one of the goons just tweeted out where they said, like, me, like, thinking about being a goon, and it was like, oh, I'm going to get this insider track and this insider information. <laughs> like, the reality is, like, this is my roll of gaffer's tape. There are many <laughs> like it, but this one is mine, right? <laughs> like, that's what it really means. I was literally crawling on my hands and knees through the contest area, taping down cables this morning. So. Dude, I've been doing this for 20 years, and they're still like, you get me around Monday to like help move 56 pallets. That's great. And I'm like, <laughs> I need another question. It's cheaper than the gym. All right, what's next? What do you got? Give us something. Who else has got a question? Yeah, what do you, what do you got, man? First time at DEF CON. Welcome to DEF CON. Welcome. how to get the most out of DEF CON, you're doing it because you just participated. Um, yeah, the best thing to do to get the most out of DEF CON is, um, is to just go do something. Like go into the village and sit down, find something that you've never done before. So it's like, okay, this, like, this is weird and different. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna get access to this equipment or these people or whatever. Uh, just sitting at home, so let me just walk. And, and literally, I know it's hard. I, by by nature, I am an introvert as well, and I have to like <laughs> dial. I have to, yes, I go into a cave for like weeks after DEF CON, and I just rock back and forth. Um, but uh, but one thing about DEF CON that I learned very early on was that just like walking up to people and saying like, "Hi, like I'm so and so. Like, what are you guys talking about? Like, what are you guys working on?" Or if you see somebody with like a cool thing, a badge or different thing, like, "Hey, what is that? How does that work?" And you just engage. People love, as you can see, talking about themselves. <laughs> um, but yeah, just going up and saying like, "What is that? How did you do that?" What is that thing? Can you show me how that works? And most people will get pretty excited about whatever the project is that they're working on and will be happy to, to share it with yeah. them. So, but yeah. 
the one of the things that I want to add, uh, one of the ways that I, like my first year at DEF CON, I went solo, I didn't know anyone here, um, and I ended up joining the scavenger hunt and they, were, they basically assigned me a team, which is uh, a great way to, to meet people. Um, scavenger hunt is great, it's still running this year. Um, but uh, what I look for uh, when I'm trying to uh, meet people is I look for people that are excited. Um, if there's like a bunch of people around a table and they are like animatedly talking, they're probably working on a challenge and they probably could use extra help. And even if you feel like you, you like if you've never or done any crypto stuff or something like that, don't, don't worry about your experience. Get in, like people are, are almost universally happy to get excited with other people who are interested in getting excited. Um, and if you can just Google things, you can very well help with any of the challenges. Uh, a lot of them can be solved just with creative Googling and finding the right thing. Um, the, the badges, uh, every single year for, for a while now, these have been uh, a part of, these have been an individual contest and they've got a bunch of things to explore. And uh, one of the things that surprised me yesterday is uh, there is a Simon Says game that was built into these. Uh, and it, uh, what I didn't realize is it, it was multiplayer at first. And what I really didn't realize is that it chains to a bunch of different people. So I come out of speaker operations and I see this huge circle of people that are all connected with wires and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Uh, the and and they, it was, they were playing a 16 game or 16 player game of Simon Says with the badges. Um, so just, just, just look for, for things that don't look right, people that are excited, just go talk to them. Most people are friendly. I, I know it can be hard to, to put yourself out there but it is one of the best ways to get things out of DEF CON. Yeah, I would say like, and then too, like, uh, like join a contest, like how he was saying. Scavenger, like, scavenger hunt. hunt. Scavenger hunt's super fun. There's really, really weird stuff on the list. Go check it out. And then like, I mean, even if you just grab a couple other people and maybe try to, try to do some of it, even if you're not going out to like win, like you're like, oh, I've got to crush this thing. Um, it's still a really good time. Or if you want something that's a super low barrier to entry, the tinfoil hat contest, um, go over there. Those are DEF CON veterans who've been around a really long time and they just wanted to do something simple and fun and they're really funny and, and nice to chat with so they're good people to meet as well. So go over there and make a weird ass tinfoil hat. Like it's, it, it's a good time. You're going to miss more than you see and if you try to stay up with everything, your liver's going to hate you. <laughs> Your liver. Just, your liver just will hate, hate you. you. Try to keep you. See what I'm saying? Pace yourself. Three, two, one. Go see what you want to go see. There are ways to get the videos later. But it, just explore okay. everything. It's a marathon and and not a race. Stay hydrated. And get out of your comfort zone and take risks. Right? Um, everyone wants to. You know, it's super easy to sit in tracks. And obviously, you know, I'm the speaker operations lead. I love to see people sit in tracks, but. Uh, Pick the talks that you want to see, but go over to contests, go over to villages, hang out at the bar, talk to people, go to chill out, talk to people. Um, Jump in those, the pool. Those will be the experiences that you remember on your plane ride back. Your, net, your networking opportunities or what you're sitting in right now far outweighs what you're going to learn in any track. I want everyone to turn to their left and introduce <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do we have any sock questions? Because I, I convinced my friend to come up on stage here, and I feel like some of us are talking more. Uh, do we have any sock questions? You want to ask them? No. No. I Woo! Said no. <laughs> do you guys still carry truchins? We, we got one right here. Welcome. Woo! Best friends. You guys link up after you go crushing. Do you want to talk about working in a CO, man? A central office? No, Gee. I'm to get a job in the MPC. Yes, okay, we should wrap, dude. I just got my CCNA two weeks ago. All right. Yeah. Isn't that delicious. Cisco Kool Aid delicious? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And incredibly boring. <laughs> I, l I like how this guy's just like, yes, yes. Do you want to learn how to be more of a criminal?
curiosity. That was it. it was, it's all curiosity. If you take something apart, when you look at the definition of the word hacker from what it, what it comes from, it has nothing to do with computers. When I do a presentation for work, I have everybody in the crowd and I got a lot of corporate yahoos running around. And I ask them, have you ever changed a recipe on something that you don't like black beans or you hate sour cream so you didn't put it in, you use cream cheese? Welcome to the hacker community because you just hacked something and it is that simple. So you get curious about it and you go into it. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I would say, um, you know, also just, I mean, doing what you're doing, like for me, conferences and like, like being at places like this, um, as you're walking around talking to people, you'll start to pick up whatever like the, the new thing is, right? Like the new technology or the thing that like all the hackers are starting to get excited about. And when you, when you hear those things over and over again, then it's like, oh, like this is gonna be big or this is gonna be interesting. And you know, 20 years ago that was like Wi-Fi, right? Like people were like excited about Dumpster diving. Right, like you know, like people were like, oh man, oh this is crazy. Look, they're gonna hook their networks up and just blast all the packets out into the parking lot. <laughs> like, but, but initially it was like a couple of people in hallways and stuff being like, oh yeah, they're doing this with the radios and blah, blah, blah. And then it, uh, and, and everybody chuckles when I say Wi-Fi because obviously it's, it's such a basic part of our lives now. But that was something that hackers were talking about in the hallways of DEF CON in the single digit DEF CON days, right? Or, or RFID, NFC, like things where people were like, oh yeah, like you just tap your freaking card on stuff, whatever. And, and that stuff was being talked about in the halls of DEF CON long before it was being used by everybody, everyone has it in their pocket, right? So, so pay attention for things like that. When you hear other people getting excited about a certain type of tech or saying like, check out this thing, um, and then you start to hear it repeated throughout the conference, or you hear a speaker mention it from the stage, and then somebody in the you know, vendor area has some little hack together kit or whatever, like grab that thing and then latch on, and it could potentially be like a huge game changing like career thing. So let me add, let me add one other thing about um, talks and tracks. A lot of times you're going to be listening to a very high-end technical talk, um, and especially if you're new, you may not get everything. Um, but what you're getting is context, right? You'll pick up a little bit, and each time you hear another talk about that, you get a little bit more. So don't get frustrated. Keep keep weighing in. Keep learning. And you, as you start to pick up pieces, you'll start to get a greater depth of knowledge and understand a little bit more of each of it. So, uh, so stick with it. You know, it may take five or six times. Think uh, like a criminal. <laughs> uh, we were very lucky when we were young and they didn't have laws and nobody fucking cared what we were doing and all that jazz. So one of the things that's different now is that, right. you know, the man. Um, anyway. But yeah, I think one of the things to, to look at is how you can exploit stuff for your gain, because that is often how you can see how criminality works. And most people don't think about it that way. They think about like, this is how it's supposed to work. How is it not supposed to work? But it works for me, my benefit, yes. What I want, my desires, yes. So I think a big thing there too is that like, there's a, we have a serious issue with imposter syndrome like in our, in our community where people think that the thing that they discovered, well, that if they discovered it, it must not be that hard to figure out. That's bullshit. Like if you find something that is interesting to you or you find a new way of doing something, don't second guess yourself to say, oh, well, if I did that, I'd like that's, you know how often you hear people say, well, if I can do it, so could you. What a bullshit like statement. Like don't doubt yourself like, oh, well, clearly I'm the biggest moron in this room. <laughs> so if I could figure it out, you can. It put the thing that you found out there, tweet it out, write a white paper, give a talk, whatever the thing is that, that you discovered, put it out into the world. Because it might be the thing that one, sparks either you know, excitement and, and entertainment in somebody, or um, it could be the thing that potentially keeps them from like, you know, in, at least in, a, in an information security standpoint, like keeps them from ending up on the news, right? You're like, oh, I found this IOC. And you're like, well, if I found it, Somebody else must have found that as well. Just it, it, put it and, out there. And I'll add to that. As someone who um, processes all the, the talks, we look for stepping stone talks. 
We look for talks where it's like, yeah, this is cool. We, we enjoy this. But I feel like somebody else can take what this person has done and keep moving forward with it. And that, that's, the, that's what we kind of refer to as like a stepping stone. This, is, this will help someone else get farther in their goal and, and, awesome. and their, well, yeah, which yeah. Is awesome. yeah. yeah. So if, even if you think, oh, this is small, this is impractical, um, only a small subsection of people would be interested in this thing, uh, share it anyways, because if you okay. do it for the gram, <laughs> we had a question. Yeah, do it for the gram. We had a question this year on the forum that said, "Why DefCon? Why are you submitting this talk to DefCon? And what um, what inspired you to give this talk?" I cannot tell you how many people said because this guy gave this talk last year, and I took that research and I expanded it and I went further with it, and this is what I got check this shit out. And we love that. So don't ever hold yourself back, no matter how small something is. It's, it's a conversation and we're a community. That, that's true of other conferences as well. Like if, if, you, if you... Don't sell other people's stuff. No, the DEF CON talk. <laughs> if, if, if there is, there's a lot of other security conferences that happen and if you see a talk that is particularly interesting to you and you think you can add to it, try. Uh, you don't even have to like give a talk if you don't want to, just play around with, with what people put out there on the talks. Um, one, of, one of the things that's personally frustrating with me is uh, there's a lot of talks universally this is across all kinds of security things that they will just like dump a Python script as, and their PDF of their slides and that, that script, that code is never maintained, it's never updated, it's never made usable. Um, uh, so there, there's, there's a lot of tools and stuff that like if you just if you just spent some time just like bringing some tools to port them from Python 2 to Python 3 or something uh, and give a talk about your adventures going through other security uh, professionals' code, that would be fun and interesting for me. Uh, I can't, uh, I'm not on the CFP board, I can't promise any things, but like that, that sounds like it would be a fun talk to me. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. More questions? Wait. Yeah. Okay, hmm? 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 You guys need a Rochambeau for it. Yeah, fight! Oh, okay, okay. Who, who want you, that guy's standing up. They're taking a... Asserted your dominance, I respect it. <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so wait, the question uh, well, was, uh, like, hmm, so you set up so, a DEFCON so, bingo hmm. card. Are you just going to say hmm while I'm talking, or what's going on here? Well, actually, I'm, I'm doing the hmm so that the speaker goon in the room, whose job it is, is to carry the stuff around, brings it quickly. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so they created a bingo card, and he's trying to get to bingo quicker than his buddy, who's also here for the first time, by coming and doing a shot on stage. So you guys have context. Do you have, is there We're, alcohol present? Is there a bar? We will find it. All right. Yeah. Who else had a question? I would just Ooh. hang out for a little while. Something might show up. Oh, look. See, it's already on its way. No, you can ask your question. This is happening. So you come over oh, here. Oh, look at this. This is, this is the participation we're looking for. Or he's got a gun. Ooh, thank God. All right. Oh, wow. Anything? And it's good. Hold on. He's, get, he's getting a... a we're a, prepped. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Look at, holy this shit. is the kind of preparation we look for. Have you thought about becoming a goon, sir? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how that happened. See, that's how this all works out. Wow, this guy. Wait. All right. <clears throat> oh, snap. Here, are you doing the shot with him? I, oh, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't drink, so it's not me. He needs to be on stage. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't drink, sorry. Oh, wah, wah. I stopped drinking 20 years ago. Here you go. You can do a shot with us. There. <laughs> I'm going to hit the hard stuff. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, do you want to be my stand-in? Yeah. All right, come, come do it. You, here, wear my badge for a bit. <laughs> I he's he's going to run off with his badge. <laughs> someone, take a, someone take a picture of him wearing my badge and be like, look at Grifter yeah. doing shots on Don't stage. Yet. Okay. <laughs> it's, Excellent. If you drink it too soon, you'll die. Okay. We've we got to time it. Don't drink it yet. Hmm? 
Don't drink it yet. You're Man, I'm smoking shit. I asked on the forums. They don't target the way to meet this people, is, and they said bring yeah. booze. You need one? So oh, here you go. Right. He's good. Wait, wait, one over here. I'm still being an adult on shift. I'm not working. I'm not, you know. I'll tell you what, if somebody wants to do it in my state, hey, I don't drink. I haven't drank in a long time except chocolate milk. Um, but if who, who's been here the longest? No, no we're good. We're good. We're good. No, I'm, I can't drink. Can't drink. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm on shift. Oh, I'm so responsible. I don't have one. No, you do. Somebody's got to be the designated. <laughs> got to keep you safe. Safe. To DEF CON. To DEF CON. Welcome to DEF CON. Ah, oh. Oh, good job, Grifter. You killed that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the real as on, as Tim Goon. <laughs> All right, stop <Scott> yeah. <laughs> right, get out of here. All right. Next question. question right here. Yeah. I've been waiting. That's you. Oh. Oh. Who's taking it? Yeah. Uh, he's asking I, I, what's happening. Oh, can I take this one? Yeah, yep. I was just repeating it for the audience. Mm -hmm. So he's asking, uh, he's been around since DEF CON 7, and Spot the Fed was a very much a prevalent thing in the early DEF CON years. He's asking what happened to Spot the Fed. So everyone's a Fed now. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah. So my first DEF CON, like, I literally was on stage and I was like, that guy's a Fed. Anyways. Um, uh, yeah, so, it's just become a lot easier. I mean, there's, they're, they're everywhere, and so it just became kind of not as common. So Fed at there. DEF CON has a very specific definition. Uh, so for those of you who may or may not be federal contractors or employees in the audience, a Fed here is badge, gun, power to arrest. Right? Duty to report. If you, if you are a federal contractor, even if you work for a three-letter agency, you're a government, uh, government officer, you're not a Fed here unless you have a badge, a gun, power to arrest. The, the other sort of side of spot the Fed is uh, in probably like the last 10 years at the very least, uh, uh, spot the Fed is one of the events that we, we've held when a, we, we lost a speaker. So if a, if a talk was not running, so like for example this hour, uh, we would spontaneously go grab like priests and a few other sock goons, put them on stage and be just like, all right, you're doing spot the Fed, go. Uh, th this particular talk, was like uh, this, this group of people was arranged about five to 10 minutes before the actual as, talk. As you can probably tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well planned. All right, so, okay. so yeah, I guess it, there are still shirts. I, asked, I just asked Nikita, I'm like, are there shirts? So they're still out there. So if you genuinely think that somebody like, and it, and it shouldn't just be like, oh, this is my buddy from work. He works for whatever. Like you should find somebody who is like trying to fly under the radar. Okay, uh, to put it into perspective, um, it's like shooting fish in a barrel here. I want you to bring me a marlin, okay? I don't want just any fed. Who's, who's a fed in here? Any feds? Anybody willing to admit it? No? No. No fed? No fed? Uh-oh. Huh? No, no, no. Then there's at least five. Good. Then we know based on numbers, at least some of you actually are, and you're full of shit. So <laughs> now we know. Find them, right? Yeah. So. All right, uh, you had a question there. Right. Yeah, uh, it's my first step done. First step done. All right. Now that you've done uh, like the hundred model of COVID, like what stuff do you think you might keep going forward? Are you a speaker? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so the question is, now that we're doing a hybrid model because of COVID, um, what will the model look like going forward? I think that's probably a Nikita question. Wait, wait. You want me to answer? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. I hope my, my intention, one of my goals to be is that I can streamline things so that we can get these talks out to everyone who can't make it. I can't tell you how many times I've had an accepted speaker be denied entry into the United States to give their talk. That's never going to happen at DEF CON ever again. Like I'm mad about it, you guys. Um, with a speaker can't get here, we're gonna we're gonna stream their talk. Um, as far as having the talks available, I'm gonna make sure that happens too. Um, we have the capability now that we can take what happens live on stage 
and push it out to the internet live. So if you're home and you can't make it, you can see that. I want to expand things for uh, Discord, for the villages and the contest, but we also have to understand that's two conferences at once. And while it was something we've adapted to now, I cannot promise it's going to be as active as it was last year or this year. But we will always still have that component open. And there is no doubt in my mind that we're going to still have that Discord open all year round because the community needs a place to go. They need a place to talk and share ideas and interact with each other that is unique to just DEF CON. And one other thing that I've noticed that started to improve is other villages and contests, they are building their own discords. Blue Team Village has one. Um, I can't even think of all of them. They have their own, they have their own now. So you, if you're really into a certain thing, go check it out on Discord and see how you can do that all year round. Build that community. You know, we're, we're a tribe of tribes. So I don't see it ending, but it's not going to be like 100%. So the other thing is, you know, 2020 sucked. Uh, but it also forced everybody to grow in new and exciting ways. We would never have like figured out how to push all this stuff online as much as we have. So that's actually helped us grow in a lot of ways. And that's kind of cool. So we're going to take the good stuff. But I would, I, you know, I like getting together with 30,000 people of my closest friends every year. Right. So hopefully we can get to that stage soon. All right. One more question. Yeah. Ooh, let's do the right here. He's in the center. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, hey, hold, hold, hold on. Before you ask your question, real quick, can I get a show of hands? Who is here for their first time at DEF CON? Holy oh. shit. Hell yeah. yeah. Welcome to DEF CON. The, you're, you're the bravest. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what's your question, man? Oh, oh, uh, oh. Every DEF That's like, what, the, where was that question when we were fucking being dumb and shit in the first 10 minutes? Like, <laughs> yeah. so he just asked, are, I, there, are there stories or legends of DEF CON past that the mass media missed? Well, I can... Or misconstrued. So, who is the reporter? Well, yeah, let's talk about that. So here's kind of a, here's kind of a funny story. Um, the press uh, sometimes can be overly aggressive in their coverage and... Um, try to build a story, craft a story to their own liking. Uh, but the fr DEF CON has a lot of friends out there. And so many years ago, we had a, uh, a very aggressive reporter decide to yes. come to DEF CON and basically like, try uh, to uh, do some gotcha journalism. The hilarity of this was that DEF CON got them first. So before they even stepped on property, we had track of the story. When they were on property, we didn't. We had a surveillance team on them, and we knew exactly what they were doing through the entire experience. Uh, it did not turn out uh, the way the reporter would have liked. Yeah. Uh, being, don't be mean. It's not we, cool. So, so we do have a dedicated press team. There, there are goons that are dedicated for interacting with the press. And there is uh, the press that show up. They are supposed to get a special press badge. They follow certain rules and code of conduct. Uh, but there are there have been cases in the past, like what X mentioned, uh, where I have a great one now. yeah. Just remember the French dudes. We don't have time. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't have time. We got to wrap this up. I have a uh, story for you. Look at <laughs> we are also very selective. We do not let in local press because all they do is get on the local TV channels and say there's a whole bunch of hackers and criminals blah, 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 and try to you know. FUD, and we just, we don't, we don't tolerate that. So we don't advertise to local press, we don't let, in, we don't let them in, um, and the press department, press at defcon.org, in case anybody wants to contact them, is very selective, and they're very strict on the rules. So if you ever see any of them taking crowd shots or anything like that, you need to tell a goon because that is 100% not allowed, and they will try to get away with it if you're not careful. And that's it. And that's it. Good. Yeah, see me afterward. I got a great story about some French guys. <laughs> that is the yes. reporter yeah, yeah. that I got. But this is not out. the French guys. The French guys are even better. All right.
Thank you for that, coming and listening. To she's Luke never been the same Rainbow. after that, by the way. Yeah. Right. And thank you to Nikita for all the work she puts into DEF CON and now running two conferences at once. Love you, Nikita. Thank you.